This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. Well, hello there, everybody. How are you going? So apparently when we skip a few weeks, uh, all hell breaks loose with, uh, the, with the app that I use. Yeah, things go bork, 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 bork. It's like we I, we basically fought with, uh, where's Jared's video signal? Where'd it go? And now and then, it'll shrink the video box that I see into a little tiny dot that you cannot grab and expand upon anymore. So I a had pixel. to, uh, yeah. It gives you a pixel of me. Ah. Pixel that is ungrabbable. Um, yeah. So I had to delete Jared's video feed and then bring it back and still didn't work. And then I had to fake it out with a different video feed. And then that brought it. It's just a mess. Yeah. Uh, uh, open source technology. It's it's easy until it's not. <laughs> something of that nature. Well, you know, the whole world's going to hell in a handbasket right now. So why not? Yeah, well, <laughs> why, why, why should our feed be any different? <laughs> So, here we are, um, teleconferencing, which I imagine a, uh, a lot of people are going to be doing these days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think, I think uh, uh, every, well, I know that um, where, I where I work at Squiz, it's pretty uh, uh, common, common practice, practice for people, people to work from home, home. But, but for those people, for those people who, who haven't, haven't done, done it before, they actually had a dry run for, for, for people to see if they could go home, go home find a place, place they could work reliably from, that the internet didn't suck too bad. Um, um, and, and we already, we already use, use video conferencing, conferencing like Google Meet to, to do a whole lot of, of um, you know, meetings and stuff online. online. And there's, there's, we're actually pretty, pretty, pretty good for, 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 for um, you, know, you know, online ways, ways of working, but, but it's, it's different, different when you, like, like when you're, when you're working, working from home, home versus fully, fully remote. remote. Like, like it's working, working from home is sort of like a, it's sort of temporary or like temporary ad hoc. Or, or in, in my, my case, case, sort of every two every two days, days a week, week on, a on a consistent basis. basis. So hence, hence you, know, you know, it helps that we also do podcasting because I've got you know the the, the boom and you know, you know, like everything set up right and, and like, like I'm, I'm very very capable, capable of working from home, from home here. But there's going to be some people out there that are scrambling. They're going to be using you know, um, iPhone iPhone headsets and like you know scrambling to find a webcam. You know, it's going to be tough. Uh, okay, so apparently we're having more technical difficulties, Jared. And then we had an echo. Uh, did I correct the problem, folks? Did I, I push the proper mute to uh, make Jared no longer uh, echoey? Echo, I fixed echo, it. Great, echo, echo, great. Echo, we fixed echo, that echo. problem. Now the only problem was is when I went over and uh, was watching you move your lips, they weren't in sync. Uh, let's see if that happens again. I'm going to go back to Jared. Let's see. Talk to moving you. my moving my lips in sync that's highly overrated why would you possibly want my lips to be in sync you know i'm not a boy band here i don't need in sync lips okay hold on we're gonna we're gonna try one other one other fix because it might be a question of the old desktop audio fighting with jared uh okay hold on here we go back to jared and uh, now I need to say in super highly intelligent things so Chris can look at my lips moving. The lips are moving, but nothing interesting is coming out. Very much the case. <laughs> yeah, that didn't uh, that didn't seem to correct things. Um, hmm. All right. Did it, uh, here's the question again back to everybody. Did uh, did you hear Jared? Because I muted his audio. Oh, I think that would have been complaining. If they didn't hear me, there would have well, been maybe complaint. not. I did <laughs> mute. Yeah, I see. No, I did mute his audio. That's why, because I turned off the, um, I turned off the desktop audio, and then now you're echoing again. So I got to turn that one off. All right, so that's off, and your desktop audio is on. Apparently, oh, everyone he's... could hear me all the time. All right, is is Jared's lips out of sync to everybody else? I don't know. Are my lips out of sync, everybody? Look at my <laughs> lips. Look only at my lips. Because <laughs> here's the fun thing. If we, if we let it go too long, by the time we finish this podcast, it'll be like five seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah. his lips. Okay, they're saying it's all good. All right. Hey. All right. Yeah, whatever. It's just yeah. on my end. You know, one more problem for me to uh, to have with this lovely open it's source. Out of sync lips. <laughs> Weird. It's like, maybe I should have just uh, rebooted this entire thing. I don't know. Anyway, Man. as we were saying, 
Yeah, so, um, God, this is just what a weird, weird week. Um, yeah. It, it's like, and I don't know what, it, what it's like for, oh, by yes, he meant that they're out of sync. Well, we're going to have to suffer, folks. Welcome to the audio version of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, so we had, in America, all of our sports are canceled. Uh, schools just yesterday, pretty much everybody is, because uh, we were about to go on spring break. Uh, and mm, Oh, wow. That, that's bad timing then, isn't it? Well, bad but semi-good because they were already scheduling a week off of school anyway, but now they just added another week on top of that. Right. Um, and then, so sports, school, uh, basically movie theaters are cutting to half capacity if you want to go to a movie, but all the movies that are uh, your tentpole movies have all delayed because they don't want the box office failure. Um, and then... Oh. <laughs> wow! So even if you want to go see a movie, too bad. <laughs> there's nothing there's, good to there's go see. Nothing on. Wow. Yeah, and then uh, and then uh, me working at Disneyland. Yeah, we just got sent to a two week vacation, mm, unpaid. <laughs> no, actually, they're <laughs> paying us. The, really? Yes. Um, so if you're rusted on during that period, you're getting paid. Yeah. Wow, that's. Both, like I know what American employment law is like, and that is very unusual. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of shocked myself. Um, Good it's, on you, Disney. It's it's not exactly the most generous because <laughs> I'm technically I'm technically part time. Yes, um, that's what most of us get hired in as, and then uh, now and then they open these periods where you can sign up for full time. But most of us uh, in the photo department. Are, are part time, and mm. as such, your guaranteed hours are not that much. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. um, but uh, they basically are making schedules for us, just on the off chance that all of a sudden everything clears up and they go, "Hey, you're back," which, which um, <laughs> and so you're getting paid on what, whatever you are scheduled. So I mean, it's uh, it's right. on the other hand, in the film industry. Everybody that was working on TV shows, yeah, they're not working on TV shows anymore. Everybody got basically told, yep, we're done for a while. We'll call you when it's back. You feel feel wow. free to work on anything else. Feel, feel free to work on anything else because there's nothing else that you could work on. Yeah. like Yeah, there's nothing else that you can work on and we're not paying you. So, so bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. You know, so that's why I say it's just just wackiness. And, and then you got the whole... The whole mania aspect of things, which is, and I don't know are if this having, is... Are you having silly people buying silly things yes. in supermarkets? That's what I'm yeah, saying. We, we are too. Well, you would have seen on the news that, you know, all the Australians seem to think that toilet paper comes from China. What? That <laughs> rice comes from China and pasta comes from Italy. So, therefore, they're buying all these things like they're hoarding it for the nuclear winter. Well, and that's just it. It's like this isn't the zombie apocalypse, folks. No, it's not. I mean, uh, it it's boggles my mind. And the like, problem is, is that the, that because some people did this, bought it all up, that makes everybody else panic and feel like they need to buy it all up, which yes. then creates the problem. Yep, that's right. And this is why we now have limits on toilet paper and limits on rice and pasta. <laughs> and I, I go into like even there's there's even some limits on. I've seen like there, there's usually a whole like full floor to ceiling rack of mineral water, like carbonated mineral water. And that's all cleaned out. Like, I don't understand why. I saw people with carts full of napkins just because that was the only paper good available. Napkins. Napkins. Dude, that wouldn't be a fun experience. <laughs> <laughs> no. And, you know, good luck trying to flush that down an American toilet. Like... You know, they're not designed for toilet paper really anyhow. No, not for quick breakdown, is it? Yeah, so now no, there's going to be a whole bunch of uh, sewage uh, issues, issues that uh, plumbers are going to be being called out for. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's not going to be a good time because the pipes, like over here, we have a different diameter of pipe for sewer, pipes leading from the house into the main line, but the, the U.S. pipes are very small in comparison. 
uh, from what I understand. So, yeah. Um, so it's going to be fun times. Good times all around. Yeah. I'm trying to look at something here, Jared, and uh, so keep you on. I was just yeah, going to. Okay. Just going to see if I had a certain other audio uh, uh, up, because obviously your Skype feed, I'm reading, th- or I'm seeing your audio just fine. But mm. no, I think everything was fine. It's just uh, it's just whatever settings happened to fire up this morning. Uh, that's what we're stuck with. Because even oh, I'm right. seeing a delay on my audio to the feed. Uh, on so, your audio? Mm, well, I mean... Mm, okay. It on my main feed, it's a lagging as well. Yeah, like, it could be. Could be. It could like everyone's just the demand on the internet is is higher at the moment, so it could be that too. Because what else do we um, have? People have to do, but yeah, basically watch internet, watch streaming movies. <laughs> exactly, that's all you can really do. So uh, yeah, which is interesting seen... because apparently, like uh, Disney just dropped three months early Frozen Two onto their Disney service. Uh, the digital wow. version of Rise of Skywalker just came out three or like a. A few days ahead of schedule. Um, That's uh, very unusual for Disney to do that, isn't well, it? Like well, they, I mean, they're basically like, "Hey, we no can, one's seeing it in the movies." Less, yeah, and so might as well get our revenue this way. Have people sign up for the streaming service. And I don't know, like, <clears throat> COVID nineteen is not going to go away in a hurry. So you know, you have to. I think a lot of businesses out there are going to have to like that are involved in like entertainment they're going to have to really reconsider what they do. And this is going to be a real problem for, you know, things like arcades. I don't know what, what the arcade is going to be doing here in Brisbane. Like as far as this goes, like it's going to be, there's not going to be a lot of people around. I don't think as they self exclude. So, or, you know, they should be self excluding. Um, so it's going to be a weird sort of a, a thing. We, I reckon this is where digital pinball rises up. Because you can do digital tournaments and digital pinball, you, you, know? you would hope. But and and the funny thing, I saw notice uh, that Zen Studios—they're all doing work from home um, mm. now. So uh, that does that does dovetail us into there was pinball news while we were while we were out. Um, mm. Let's start with let's start with the big piece, and mm. that is that. We are not going to be getting any new tables from the Williams app or Zen in general, uh, according to them, until May or June. Yeah, which is a very long wait. And it's one of those things where we go, so what have they got brewing up? (laughs) Yeah, because that's a long long wait between drops. So either it's a timing thing where... And when I say timing thing, because interestingly enough, there was a new video from, I don't know, I think, I don't know what toy show was out, but basically 1UP brought their newer version uh, of the uh, three-quarter scale pinball machine. Um, So it was different than the one that they showed at CES, slightly. Oh, okay. Um, And they were talking about how there's going to be three models. You're going to have your Star Wars model. You're going to have your Williams pinball model. And then they said there's going to be a third, and they'll announce what's on it in 90 days. That was in February. So, February, March, April. Hey, look at May. Hmm. And when is Zen going to bring out a new table? Hmm. So, this leads into an interesting prospect. What if they did a Universal Pictures core pack table because you would have Back to the Future, E.T., Jaws, Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, Jurassic Mayhem, Monster Bash, see where I'm going here, Creature, that leaves Mm. two tables. Two tables that would be part of Universal Pictures and because it's Universal Pictures, you can mix all those licenses. I don't think Universal would have an issue. big problem with it. Um... I, if somebody kind of threw out, well, there's Fast and Furious, which now is being delayed a whole year. The movie is, but that would have been a good promo tie-in. Um, they're, they're doing another one of them? Another Fast and Furious. <laughs> yes, yes, they're doing Fast and Furious 9. Um, oh, God. All right, eh? uh, yeah, I, 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 saw, I saw the trailer, and I just kind of went, 
Oh my god, they're going to space at some point, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> yes, invariably they'll be like Elon Musking a car up there, and they'll be uh, yeah. encircling them. We we we've yeah. we've gotten past uh, driver skill, and now it's just into superhero driving skill. It's just kind of redonkulous. Um, yeah, it is. But you know, it sells seats. I guess people doing ridiculous stunts in cars. Uh, well, but that's just my point. They won me over, uh, starting with Tokyo Drift, because all of a sudden it was like, hey, you're doing really cool stunts in cars, yeah. and it's real stunt work. Yeah. Now we're going back into the, well, you can't do any of these things in real life, so it's now back to, digital. as far as I'm concerned, digital cars. Yeah. Yeah. Or digital, yeah, heavily digitally altered stunt augmented work. Augmented. Augmented, yeah. Um, and that, so I checked out the Hobbs and Shaw movie, and if you've seen the trailer, you've seen The Rock holding a chain that leads up to a helicopter with him grabbing the back of, like, this tow truck and making sure the helicopter doesn't fly away. Oh, and, really? <laughs> and that's okay. where, yeah. Sure. Um, what is, so, so, basically, The Rock is now a Terminator, is he? And he has superhuman strength? That's what I'm saying. It's just, you just go... Okay, if it was Iron Man doing that, I would be cool with it. But real dude doing that is clearly not a real stunt, so I'm not right. impressed. Um, yeah. But anyway, so back to back to speculation time. Our favorite. Um, what could possibly be two other tables that are Universal Pictures licensed that Zen could be cooking up? Because it would make all the sense in the world. For them to do I, that and then package that as another uh, machine. I think I know. I, oh. I, I'm going to lead in. I've got, I've got an idea. Pitch perfect. <laughs> Pitch perfect. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. It's it's a Glee Club themed uh, um, table. <laughs> yes. One will be totally pitch really perfect, and the other one will be the pentatonix pinball. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly right. Um. So I'm trying to think. Was was there other Universal Pictures uh, licensed Williams pinball? Um, let's see, pinball was just throughout the shadow, shadow but I thought wasn't that yeah. was that Universal or was that Paramount? Somebody's gonna have to do a quick Google search on that because I don't know off the top of my head. Someone's gonna beat me to it though. It is Universal. Mm. Interesting. That would be. We need to refer back to that uh, big list of pinball machines that we did a couple of episodes ago and see which ones would be, like, the movie ones would be um, universal. Now, obviously, let's get this one out of the road initially. Indiana Jones, that's not universal, that's Paramount. is it? That's Paramount. That's Paramount. And yeah. Lucasfilm, so. Yeah, that's right. So, eventually, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see that one, but... Uh, I'm yeah. I'm 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 waiting for the peanut gallery here to uh, do the web search for us and uh, throw out other th other ideas. So we just need one more universal uh, table, and that would be, I think, a very logical guess uh, as to what would be. Um, while we're thinking of that, though, mm -hmm. here's the question: What ten Star Wars tables are going to be included? Because they're going to include 10, and there's 19 available to pick from. Some of those are like B-roll tables, though, if you like to call it that. Like, they're not core movie tables. So how many movie, actual movie episodes are we up to now? So well, they have six, done they four. have done episode 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Those mm. are the movies that they have done done they have yet to do rise of skywalkers a table we're all kind of assuming that that would be happening Nine. with the video release mm. yeah it makes sense um so, i mean so that would be nine is that correct that rise would be nine in total yes which still doesn't mm. make a nice total now i've i've come up with if you but i'm gonna idea. give you i'm gonna give you a chance to still uh throw yours out there if you want yeah, um, yeah, of the ones that aren't the core movie ones, that like the the secondary ones, uh, none are really jumping out from 
from a, I guess, an appealing perspective. Like you, you'd want those core tables in and would you want to actually have one of the B-roll tables included? I mean, it's going to be 10, but what's the 10th? I don't know. Like I'm at a loss to think what I would put in to fill that gap. Because here's my theory. Hmm. There's eventually going to be two volumes of tables. You know, two different machines. Yeah, right. So your first machine is going to be heavily themed off of the original trilogy. And then the second machine would be themed off of this second trilogy. Mm -hmm. So that would give them time to actually do a Rise of Skywalker table. So right off the bat, you got episode, uh, you got Star Wars, Empire, Jedi. Yeah. Uh, On top of that, throw the Han Solo table. Not the Han Solo pack, the Han Solo table. Boba Fett. Now we're up to five. Droids, six. Uh, Starfighter. What was that Mm. one? Wasn't it called Starfighter? Uh, The one where you're actually like on the, like the... The huge ship. Yeah, like, on the it, on the Star Destroyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One in space. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that would be seven. Um, and then I'd throw in uh, Darth Vader. That would be eight. Mm-hmm. Um, droids. That would be nine because it's, again, we're dealing with just 3PO and R2. And then for the tenth one, it, oh, God, it was on the top of my head. Oh, our favorite, Masters of the Force. Ugh. So... <laughs> So that that would make a core table, you know, all your basically all your machines that were specific to the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. So then for your second pack, you would have, like I said, you'd have now you'd have uh, the uh, episode seven, eight, nine, plus their corresponding tables, which was what that that. Uh, Octo Island and uh, oh yeah, you know the, those little offshoots. You'd have Clone Wars. You'd have Rebels. Um, you'd have the three uh, haunts, uh, the three solo movie tables, um, mm-hmm. and I know I'm forgetting something else yeah, in that I'm, mix. But my ability to contribute to Star Wars naming tables <laughs> is very. Is not really that uh, one of my skills. <laughs> so anyway, that's what that's what my guess is that it's going to be. Uh, that way, you're not you're not relegating a second wave to be just nothing but B tables. It's going to be original trilogy tables because then your artwork can be corresponding to that. And mm, then that's true. You when you go do it within a, the same sort of timeline, I guess. Yeah. To make it, yeah. And then when you go into the uh, the the second machine, um, again your core your anchor would be the three movies, uh, with everything else being ancillary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's my guess. Uh, yeah, that's, that seems reasonable enough. Like um, that they've got to get that they've got to get the new Rise of Skywalker or Skywalker table in. Yeah. Like it's it's it really is critical to making that possible. Okay, so here's arts. He, Here's the uh, the news from the peanut gallery, uh, according to Pinball Wiz. Uh, Flintstones is also universal. Yeah. Which I had thought that was Warner Brothers because they own Hanna Barbera, which was the cartoons, but they obviously did not make the movie. So yeah. therefore, it makes perfect sense that uh, that it's would be universal. it. So there you go. That's that's our uh, that's my guess right there. The Shadow and Universal. The, the Shadow universal. and the, the Flintstones. Shadow and Flintstones. Yeah, I would be okay with those. Like Shadow you know, is an underrated game. The, I mean, Shadow is definitely one of those that people love as a home table. I don't think it got mm. a lot of love out in the arcade, but for homeowners, they love it because apparently it's really deep. Um, yeah. And then Flintstones, the only thing I hate about it is the art package. Uh, the yeah. gameplay itself is actually kind of fun. I love it, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a great <laughs> A really, really good table to play. I, I remember playing the crap out of it when I was in uh, one of the arcades I worked at. It's an excellent game. I think I had uh, avoided it for a long time, and then when I was up in Oregon, you know, a couple years back, uh, I came across it and was like, "Hey, this is <laughs> this is much better than I think I had in my head." So that's right. Uh, hey, ball saved. So there you go. That's yeah. that's what uh, I don't know. Should we call that an official guest by the blockade, Jared? 
yeah, but Black what? Eden Friends. I think the Black Eden Friends might be on it. It could for... be Shadow and um, Flintstones. And, and that would be for the a an announced Universal pinball. <laughs> I don't know what they would call it. What that one up would call it. But so there would be why you would have a delay. Um, yeah, because they're probably building. <laughs> well, no, it's not just that you're building, but once you start partnering, once you start partnering with other companies. You can't just throw out things when you're good and ready. You have to time it with when they're ready so that you can all make a block announcement and maximize your resources for uh, for hyping it. That's right. Yeah. So it needs to be timed. It's just like a movie release, essentially. Um, Pretty much. Or movie table. Movie table release. Yeah. It is very much like that because it's, like it's, it's tied with a physical thing. Yeah. Mm. So we'll see. I don't know. That's that's the best guess I can because I honestly can't think of anything else that would be delaying them this long. Um, no, there's no reason for them to delay. Like, uh, and unless they're like we we discussed a couple of episodes ago, like you know they're probably moving into the um, alphanumeric tables now because they're sort of running out. So you know, maybe maybe something's going on there that's causing them to do uh, something. I don't you know. know. That's possible. That is possible. Yeah. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to. Has a lot of trouble. Right. <laughs> I'm. I'm going to fall on the uh, the side of uh, therefore that that Zen is competent and is not uh, stumbling upon that, and it it's going to go this way because it's more fun to have my hopes up about two new tables that none of us have played digitally uh, within TPA mm-hmm. at least. Um, the shadow would be an interesting one to see what they could do uh, um, with the effects in it like the i think that will be i don't really know that movie super well in fact i think the only exposure i've had to the movie is through the pinball i have not ever seen the movie if if you attempt to watch the movie you're going to be sad <laughs> okay so i i it's one to just leave it straight to pinball leave it leave it as a video it, it, it's kind of like if you've never seen johnny mnemonic don't watch johnny mnemonic <laughs> yeah because dolphins it, it's just it's a terrible movie and especially yeah, especially post matrix where there's a lot of similar ideas in the matrix and mm-hmm. the fact that they're both with Keanu um yeah it's a one to leave straight to pinball that being said if you've never seen tank girl watch tank girl um <laughs> I don't think I have Oh, it came out of probably, I don't know if it came out the same time as The Shadow. Um, Tank Girl is an, or excuse me, at the same time as uh, Giant Mnemonic. Um, uh. Equally terrible future movie. Uh, it features Ice-T in <laughs> uh, Kangaroo, like looking like a kangaroo. What? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's a very bizarre movie. Um but it has fun and embraces this stupidity, whereas Johnny Mnemonic it. like it's trying to be leaned serious. into it. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh dear. Yeah. The you, you think about you think about what the people thought should be a comic book movie back in the early yeah. '90s, and you just go, "Boy, you were all wrong." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh boy. Um, okay, I'll, I'll remember not to get those out on um, on my streaming service. <laughs> nah, you got to watch Tank Girl. <laughs> all right, all right. I, it's, okay, with the exception of Tank Girl, I'll, the, I'll, I will do. W- watch it purely um, for the lols. Uh, for the lols, that's it. It, yeah. it. It's one of those that's so bad it's good. Yeah, right. <laughs> um. All right. Uh, what other what other pinball news was there that I was going to? talk about while we're out uh, oh i know the other one what okay so <laughs> and you're gonna have to help me because i've yet to uh, play it um oh, yeah? farsight published and i'm saying published because it wasn't them that made it um, oh yeah yes. f- they published what what's the name of that uh, title do you uh, remember f- f- uh, world soccer something a pin, uh, World Soccer um, Pinball? Is that it? <laughs> well, 
<laughs> let's just throw out some random names of games. Hey, I'll just scroll to it because um, I've got it on my phone because we're in one of the early access countries. It's Pinball Soccer World. <laughs> wow, that's that's a word salad right there. <laughs> Pinball Soccer World. Um, oh, I, I could say one thing about the game. Um, must be time for Epignatus because you hear that a lot in the game. <laughs> because there's a co- there's a, <laughs> I know right. <laughs> Apparently, that's a thing you eat when you go to soccer games. Epignatus. Okay. Oh, I think it must be time for Epignatus. Yeah, I could really use uh, an Epignata at the moment. It's like okay, it's sure, mate. <laughs> is that because you're like playing spain or mexico or what uh i i guess it is what it's essentially like the hot dog of soccer i guess okay i don't know i don't know but there's a there's a cultural reference in there that i think everyone is not getting and or maybe it's just me because i i'm not a, a football fan or a soccer fan um so, so the, 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 the t- t- oh yeah go ahead go ahead so the so in summary, the if I was to sum it up in um, a, a few words, and I'll try and make it a few, it's not terrible. That's what I'd say if I was summing it up in a few words. This so, is made by the people that made... Trick Game Studios. Trick Game Studios. S- the Space Cadet one. Right. And I believe they're based in Brazil. Yeah, that's right. Which would, hence the Epignatas reference. Okay. Um, and basically what they have done is they're, to the best of our knowledge, they're essentially licensing Farsight's, uh, ball engine. Yeah. Or um, well, the same engine they use for Pinball Cadet. It basically looks and feels very similar to Pinball Cadet. Right. Um. Very similar art style. Um, for the actual, like, the way the flippers work, they're, they're perfectly fine for a mobile game. Like, they're not... They're not pro physics or anything, but like for what the game does, the the flipper um, behavior is is perfectly fine. So um, it's a top down two D pinball like, in that you have flippers and you're shooting a ball. But I think that's kind of where the pinball stops, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Like you you can get multi ball in it. So you shoot the like the table the lay the layouts of the table like the actual play board itself doesn't vary at least in the 30 levels that i've played i have actually played 30 levels of this thing um so <laughs> i've really given it a good play test the only thing that changes is the obstacles on the table so they have like things that spin things that go backwards and forwards you've got a, a referee that moves around the table that you can hit for points and each one of the tables each one of the levels in very much like um um uh, angry birds style is you've got like three goals that you need to meet for each table to get three stars or three soccer balls as they call it so you're going for different aspects you might need to shoot the goal 10 times and you might need to like finish the game or finish your um um level with two balls remaining and you know that sort of thing so it's very goal oriented play which you know it's kind of fun like they're almost like mini challenges um and you know, it's that's that's a nice. It's not a bad way to actually while away a few a few um, minutes on a train. Right. Um, Again, it's embracing the mobile game aspect and not trying to be a pure pinball. Exactly right. It's 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 not targeting us. It's not targeting the pinball the pinheads really. It's a different audience. And you know, even as a bit of a pinhead, I I don't think the game's terrible. Um, it's certainly a nice diversion away from the more serious pinball games out there. Um, there are going to be some people out there that don't really like the, the graphic style or the, the way the table's presented. Um, I will say that the, I wish there was a way that you could turn off the commentary because old mate saying, let's I really could use an Epignata right now. It's like, well, go and get one mate and stop commentating because I don't want to hear you anymore. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just one of those sort of mobile games. The, it's got four flippers, essentially. There's like an upper play field, if you want to call it that and a lower play field. And, um, some of the challenges I was stuck on level 25 for a while. Um, 
it's not as easy as you might think. Like the the first couple of levels of like you do it with your eyes closed. Like literally, I think you probably could play with your eyes closed and you pass. Um, but the level twenty five, it's yeah the the goals you actually need to sort of aim and work around the obstacles on the play field um, to be able to succeed. Uh, so you know it's look it, give it a go when it releases if if you are in one of the countries that it's soft launched in australia is one new zealand is one and i think um um brazil and somewhere else is also on the list as well um so check your app store for pinball soccer world <clears throat> salad hmm. uh, and and see if you can um uh, give it a flip and yeah tell us what you reckon see i've got a uh, i've got a spot on my phone uh Few, uh, quite a few podcasts ago, we did a whole segment on um, mobile pinball games that were out there, and I, I created this section on my phone that says pinball, and it's those are <laughs> those are the apps that I have, and it, so I've got a slot waiting for this to uh, to put yeah. it in there. <laughs> it's, it's it's ready and waiting. Oh yes, um, yes. What games are in there at the moment? Oh, uh, let me bring that back up. So I actually have. <laughs> unfairly, but I have the Zachary app in there because it's not been updated in forever for iOS. Um, oh, right. So, so not the, like the one on Android. No. It, no, right, yeah. No. Okay. Um, I have that, uh, it's called Pinball Blast, which is the uh, one that was made by Pepperidge Farms for, you know, goldfish crackers. Oh, yeah. Um, you which, should also put in Trolley Pinball in there too. Um, have you I tried have... Trolley Pinball? No. Oh, you should definitely put that one in there. Okay. Yeah, give Give that a red hot go. Trolley oh. pinball. It's it's a basically a, it's a three. It's actually a three D like, um, pinball game. It's designed purely to basically market trolley lollies, uh, the gummy lollies, um, and the like. You're basically shooting for like you know sour worms and stuff on the play field. Like it's yeah. it's totally a marketing thing. But it's it's also for a short period of time not terrible. It's dead easy, but it's. It's it's okay. Um, I also have one called Dreamland. Uh, one that says it's called Collection. I don't know what that is. Uh, oh. Pinball King, Pin Basket, which was like basketball, I think, and right Pinball Flipper. I don't know. They were they were dreadful, Pinball and I just Flipper. never deleted them off here because I think I wanted them for a good laugh now and then. <laughs> yeah, you want to look back and go, ha 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 ha. That's terrible. Yes, but I did want to say though, for, you know, for because as soon as this thing got announced, uh, everybody was like, "Really? This is what Farsight's been working on?" And it's like, no, Farsight hasn't. No, been. they're not. They, that's not what they've been working. on. They've been working on the uh, PBA bowling. Um, yeah, yeah, and and the the toy shop cabinet. Right. So and that's literally it. That's that's what that's what Varsity's been working on, spending their time on, not this thing. So don't bash them for making a mobile app. This is them being a publisher. Um, yeah, they are and, being a publisher, and it says clearly when you open the game, published by Farsight. Yeah. So that's that's it. It's Trick Game Studios. Direct all your your critique towards them. Yep. Yeah. Um, it does remind, the, and and I'm not going to harp too much, but there was a thread that popped up just the other day. Uh, mm regarding someone's disappointment in Zen because it uh, basically they were saying that it's an unplayable app. <laughs> I love oh, sta- yeah, I love abs- statements like that. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's really unplayable. Um, yeah. And that uh, what it basically boiled down to was the fact that they hate the mobile aspect or mobile gaming, freemium gaming. Okay, fair enough. I get that. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't make the game broken. Because uh-huh. I can tell you, I have all eighteen tables fully, fully I'm maxed not. out. Not one cent spent. So, mm-hmm. uh, very playable. Play it daily. Um, in terms of, oh, but they've taken all the fun out of it. And I've said this many a time. I actually kind of enjoy the daily challenges. And once I've maxed out a table, I tend to not Don't. go back to the game. And I almost never play a true three ball game of pinball on my phone. If I want that, I step up to my computer and. Use the That's old right. uh, box back there and play it that way. Yeah, exactly right. Um, That's the, it's like it's definitely the better way to play. Right. Uh, with a with a controller on a decent running laptop with good effects, it's the way you should be enjoying pinball. Yeah. Um, and then the complaint was, it doesn't play nice with my Mac. To which I go, Why are you gaming on a Mac? Yeah, don't. <laughs> You're doing it wrong. Like, I tried doing it. I tried installing 
I think Pimble okay <laughs> way back when on a Mac, and it was it was terrible because Macs don't have dedicated graphics cards that are anything worth calling home about. But the and, the the issue was that it wasn't uh, doing it couldn't connect his controller, it wouldn't work with the controller. Right. To which I gotta blame. Well, there was a third party a key, app. Yeah, well, yeah, probably, and also keyboard. Heard of it. Uh, uh, didn't like the keyboard because he couldn't uh, dedicate which buttons he wanted to use, which I understand maybe what that complaint was about because later he basically said he's confined to a wheelchair, so who knows if he has other uh, uh, issues okay. with, with motor skills, which, again, fine, valid complaint. Yeah. But, <laughs> and then and then he kept on saying how this is all fine with TPA, all fine with TPA, to which I'm like, well, if you like TPA, go and play it. Go play it. Off Why you go. have a nice day? Right, <laughs> you know, um, it, if you're perfectly happy with that and perfectly happy with the graphics and the physics on that, which we all were, well, I shouldn't say we all, but here at the blockade, we were fine with it for the most part until yeah. we saw what Zen did, and it's kind of like this: Hey, I'm perfectly fine eating a a, a nice cut of top sirloin. That's great. It's a yummy steak. I had no problem mm. with it. And then I tried filet mignon. Yeah. Uh, exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> and you go, wait a second. There's a much yeah. better steak out there. It's still steak, but it's a much better steak. <laughs> That's right. Exactly right. Tastiest steak. <laughs> Zen, Zen pinball is a tastiest steak. Right. That is it's, it's not steak. hamburger, and neither is TPA. TPA was not hamburger. It, it was a steak, but... <laughs> yeah. It was a steak, but you know, Zen is steak with chips and really nice slaw. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's where that's where I just kind of I don't uh, I I don't know when when people are and I get it. There's people out there that are dedicated. Their only gaming platform is their iPad or their phone. To which, again, I just kind of question, well, if you're really into gaming, why are those your only options? And if you're totally enthusiastic about just being able to be portable and mobile, then get yourself a Switch. Switch, exactly. Uh, you know, I saw the other day there was a, a game, it was like a dungeon crawler pinball game, which was initially released on a Switch and has only recently been released to um uh steam and i'm going to i think i've got it in my wish list actually because it looks really really interesting but it is called <clears throat> creature in the well and um yeah it's it's uh if you haven't seen it on uh switch it's definitely a really good game from what i can tell but the the premise of it is it's like a dungeon crawler where you go through rooms and, but you're using in some rooms like flipper, like pinball, like, like game elements to navigate through the levels. It's like this mechanical, this monster has put a whole lot of mechanical challenges in your way and you need to pass them using this. It's really, really interesting game. Would you say it feels like Yoku's Island? Oh, I don't, from the gameplay, it's, it's not quite platformer like it it's more like um i'd like to say maybe uh one of the sort of popular dungeon crawler style games i wouldn't say it's uh, presented in an isometric way like um diablo would have been um so it's got that top down sort of like long view um okay of it and you get it, so it's like a, a, a very zoomed out view. You can see the character on the, on the um, essentially, let's call it the play field. Um, and then you've got to like, you know, shoot your sword. There's like, you capture a ball and you shoot it at the elements to trigger them. And then you do something else to make the other one trigger. And then it unlocks the, the way forward sort of thing. So it's, um, uh, some of the uh, later levels look pretty challenging in what you have to do. So it looks, yeah, pretty interesting. So that was on Switch first. And now it's on Steam. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Um, so, I, I, I cut away from you. I didn't want anybody to see that face. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah my sneeze face is not a pretty one. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's one worth checking out. But, you know, Switch got it first. So, yeah. But And, and the point being is that 
Zen is really high on uh, the Switch for their pinball game. They're putting a lot of effort into into it. Um, yes. The only thing you have to get past is the fact that you're going to be dealing with the censored versions of the tables, which, truth be told, you get over the censorship pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah, you I mean, do. It's not, uh, a, you know. It's not as big as people are making it out. Like, if you're... If you really care that much about it, then get it on Steam, and you'll be fine. But if you want, like the the just if you want to carry it with you everywhere and play it whenever you want, I'd forego a little bit of like cleavage for, and 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 arguably yes, some of the call outs for the fact that I can literally take it on the train into work with me and play it if I want. Like that's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, that is, thank you for, uh, for reminding me of that, because that was something I wanted to talk about here, Wilbers. The um, question is, what happened with the issue on Black Rose and different physics at different frame rates? Uh, did you get a reply from Zen at Zen? Yeah, so check this out, Jared. Mm. This was interesting. Uh, there's a Reddit tournament that goes on weekly, um, hosted by, I believe, if you search tournaments, uh, David Four. I believe is who it is. It's a lock tournament, but if you go into Reddit, go into the uh, Pinball FX3 uh, subthread, you can find all the information about how to unlock it. Basically, he's running a tournament weekly, keeping track of scores, doing five tables or five weeks, um, scoring accordingly to that. And uh, was playing Black Rose, and Wilbur's is the one that pointed this out to me because he was like, hey, are, are, are you seeing what I'm seeing? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, oh, hey, look at that. Jared's video just shrunk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, the gremlins. Oh, look. Uh, oh, hey, look at that. Now it went back to normal. I don't know what the hell's going on here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, uh, the question that he had for me was, what are, what frame rate are you playing the game at? And I just got my... Well, I, I, right. I don't know. Uh, you know, I've got it on my big monitor, which is, you know, a higher resolution monitor. And uh, I don't know. How do I find out? So he told me how to, you know, put up the Steam uh, frame, okay. frame rate thing count. And I looked and it was like, oh, it's at a, I'm cruising at 104 frames. Like, well, that's pretty good. Right? Pretty sweet, right? And he goes, okay, well, on Black Rose, when the ball ejects from the ball lock and... You don't flip. You let it bounce off the left flipper. He goes, where does the ball go? So I checked it out, and I was like, yeah, yeah, it either goes over the slingshot and pretty much to the out lane, or it kind of bounces near the top of the slingshot and then slides down, and you can catch it. Um, it's a little sketchy, but you can catch it with the right flipper. And he mm -hmm. goes, exactly. Now then. He goes, lock it in at 60 frames per second. Which, again, I'm like, how do I do that? So he walked me through the whole thing of how to do that. It turns out all I really need to do was just flip on V-Sync on my monitor because I had not done that. <laughs> oh, right. Because um, V-Sync would have locked it in at 60 frames. Um, but the oh, guy that gave oh, me okay. this monitor was like, no, don't V-Sync because it's a G-Sync monitor. But... Your game has to be G-Sync anyway. Um, okay. You lost me. Okay. I know. I know. I'm I'm losing myself too. So <laughs> point being, when I locked it into 60 frames per second and did the exact same thing, the ball bounced on the left flipper and then quite nicely bounced not quite as high over to the right flipper and was easily catchable and never made any attempt whatsoever to go out the out lane. Oh, okay. To which then it was, well, wait a second. Uh, is the game supposed to be played locked at 60 frames yeah. or not? And what did they tune it at, at Zen? Uh, they would have tuned it at console, wouldn't they? You, 60 frames? Maybe. I don't know. But and, and it's not this way on every single table. It was, uh, from what Wilbers was describing, he noticed it on uh, on Black Rose for sure, and I can't remember what the other one, I want to say it was... Uh, attack from Mars, but I'm not 100%. Uh, mm. Anyway. So, but it became, well, hey, if I'm playing a tournament, do I have an advantage with more frame rates? Because what I've noticed was it seems like the ball was even wilder, which I liked. It made the table yeah. harder, 
But And because the whole thing is, if you have more frames per second going, then that means that the game can register points of contact that much quicker, and mm. therefore you have more detailed uh, shooting ability. Yes. Um, that be Oh, yeah, it was high speed, too. That was the other one. Um, mm. That being said, shooting the broadside of the ship in Black Rose was brutally difficult because, I mean, you, like, it was a hair's fraction of difference between being good and just rocketing off the side. But I'm when I was in 60, 60 frames, frames, when I was locked in 60 frames, it was going up much easier. So, oh. yeah. So I, uh, Interesting. I contacted Deep, I think it was Deep. I think I also yeah. contacted Akos. I contacted both of them and kind of threw it out there. I can't remember who responded to this particular question. Um, but uh, it turns out that, yes, they do tune him at 60 frames. So you that go. would be the official thing. So if you have the ball doing kind of funky, weird uh, behavior or behavior that seems utterly cruel or the ball is extra super bouncy and you don't know why, that might be if you're uncapped that's causing the ball to do other things that were not intended. So it makes me think that, you know, if that was the intent, would you then only offer the ability to like run the game up to 60 frames? If that's the way it was tuned, it's supposed to be run. Like what would be the approach there? If you were a software developer, would you, would the you hard cap only it. allow it to go? Yeah. Cap it. Right. Yeah, because then it's otherwise it's a, it's operating outside the the bounds of the the game, but make it so that sixty frames is very very good. But it also like, might have been that this game and High Speed Two, um, like all the other ones, might be kept, and it's just these two that happen to uh, have slipped through the cracks. Oh, maybe. Yeah, true. They. Yeah, possible. I'm trying to think. Were they both in the same table pack? Mm. Oh, I, I think I, High Speed 2 came earlier. It was one of the first four, wasn't it? And then Black Rose was a bit later. Black Rose was definitely the second pack. I'm going to look real quick and see mm. um, what they were. Because I'm not quite 100% sure. Let's see, Parties on Attack from Mars. No, Attack... Because it was, I'm looking at just the first four tables that are listed here. It's Party mm. Zone, Attack from Mars, Medieval Madness. Medieval was definitely the first. Uh, Junkyard. And then Getaway and Fishtails. Um, so yeah, Black no Black Rose was yeah Black Rose was Theater of Magic and Champion Pub. Yeah, that's right. It was with those. Yeah. Mm. So all right. Well. So much for trying to come up with a conspiracy theory there. <laughs> but uh, oh, Black Rose was part of his own in AFM. Man, see, I really don't know what these things are. That's so funny how quickly we forget. Um, but anyway, there you go, folks. Cap your machine at 60 frames. That's how they're supposed to be played. Right, there you go. They should make that known. Or, well, I guess we are. We are. <laughs> We're going to make it known for <laughs> So that's a nice little bit of detecting work for the folks on um, Reddit there and and you, Chris. So nice work. Uh, well, I blame Wilbur's for bringing it to my attention, but uh, it's all Wilbur's fault. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there, there you go, though, folks. If you ever have any kind of uh, question or you know ball behavior thing that you want to check out, um, please contact us. Um, I'm on Steam. Uh, shut your traps. So look me up, friend me. Uh, so long as you put that you're a pinball person, I'll accept you. Um, yes. And then you can contact me that way, or you can drop us a line uh, via Twitter. It's right there, at Blockade. Um, we respond to messages that way. If you're watching via YouTube, feel free to comment uh, on the YouTube channel. And I try and respond to every single one of those also. So bring to our attention. I'm, I'm happy to, to do a little investigative work. And... Uh, I can actually make contact with certain people at Zen and get a response that you might not be able to get otherwise. Yeah. So. Worthwhile. Yep. Does I did have a good conversation with Deep. I can't really repeat mm. hardly anything of it. And it wasn't even like it was that... Uh, hush, hush. Super, 
Super secret. Yeah. Super secret. But it was secret enough that they don't need the general public to know. But it made me kind of go, oh, okay. It's more like inner workings. You know, how things get decided. Inside or, or, baseball. Mm. Yeah, inside baseball. So, um, but anyway, I can certainly then post other notes and, and try and get a response out of them that way. Mm. It's good. Uh, hold on. What else? What else we have? The problem with that is that it caps it for the non-Williams tables. Could do something. So, the opposite. Wait. So the non-Williams tables are fine to play. Those are meant to be played uncapped. That crazy. Um, yeah. That would be kind of weird. Well, how would they? I mean, they'd have to sample it at some frame rate for it to be consistent. So yeah. How I don't know how that would work. The only nice thing about for me was as soon as I put it to a cap, my video card no longer was screaming at me. <laughs> That's nice. It's well, nice to have a a quieter video card. Well, because it screams at me because uh, I've got this twenty five sixty by what is it? I don't know what the dimensions of this thing are. Anyway, it's not a ten eighty monitor. It's a slightly larger. <laughs> um, and ever since then. Uh, games that I play, it just, you know, honestly taxes the video card all that mm, harder. Yeah. And I never was having a problem with the Zen being taxing on the video card. And all of a sudden it was like, Wah! really going nuts. So as yeah, soon as yeah. I capped it, it was back to being quiet. Mm, so that's good. It's a uh, performance enhancing from a noise perspective. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I might have to try the same thing with, uh, you know how I was having issues with Zacharia. Um, mm -hmm. that might be also if I was playing uncapped. Um, I reckon if you cap to 60, you'll have a great time. I, I have a feeling it'll work much, much better. Yeah. So, um, things like spinner sometimes don't work correctly, capped or uncapped, according to RoboLoco. Oh. Huh. Is that on Williams tables? Or no, he's saying on the or non, on, the, on just the regular Zen tables. Uh, okay. So, does it, so what you're saying, it doesn't matter if they're capped or uncapped, they still don't work. So that says, sounds like a bug, not a frame rate issue. <laughs> so, good good to know, but I don't think it relates to frame rate, if, if I understand correctly, a rubber loco. Some people like vegetables, some people don't. It depends on their tongue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, All right. Oh, right, okay. Understood. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, well, uh, folks, we're going to uh, we're going to sign off now. Um, enjoy your we Armageddon. Managed to do a show, yeah, and, and please enjoy your toilet paper. It tastes delicious <laughs> with sauce on it. <laughs> and yeah. uh, we'll be back. You know what? It, it was funny. You know how we we keep on saying that you know we're having these gaps in in podcasts simply because there's not anything pinball related for us to to talk about. You know, with when we had both Zen and TPA kind of cranking, that helped. And yeah. Zachariah cranking. And then Zachariah, you know, like I said, they keep on putting out their deluxe tables um, here and there. But for some reason, uh, we haven't been able to get a hold of Mart to actually find out news about them. Um, yeah. But with with a lack of news, there's not much for us to do other than do wild speculation. So, uh, hey, fill those threads up with speculation and gives us things to talk about here too. But That's with, exactly right. with, with, all the, um, with all the sports done... I'm laughing at sports radio and what ESPN are going to be doing because yeah, what they, they have saying? literally nothing to talk about. Um, yeah. They're going to have to go through, I reckon they're going to have to like talk about highlight matches I, and, <laughs> and go back in time and go, Oh, we, we're doing we I guess we're doing, you know, the, the matches in the 1990s. How good were they? <laughs> right? I mean, and, and I feel their pain because I'm like, wow, you guys got to do this daily for three hours. <laughs> yeah. Each. Yeah. That's that's ridiculous to have to be doing that. And I do have I to mean, laugh. I saw I saw a clip of uh, WWE had a uh, SmackDown match, I guess, the other night. And they did it with no audience. But you wouldn't oh. know that by the wrestlers' behavior because the wrestlers were still basically pantomiming to the audience that wasn't there. Okay. So, <coughs> how, 
So it so it was like they're sitting there doing the you know yeah yeah you know raising the hand for you know to bring up the cheers. There's no cheers to be had. <laughs> but they they're overdubbing cheers. No, into it. Are, no, not not that I know. Of. I didn't actually listen to audio of the clip. But the point being was it's it's almost like you could CGI in people later. <laughs> yeah, and they're, they're literally green screening the matches. Right. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah, it's just kind of funny. I mean, they were doing sweeping camera pans across just chairs and then landing on the ring. (laughs) And the wrestlers were coming down to their music and and looking as if there was an audience, and there's no audience there. And and it's So I don't know if it was, because I don't watch wrestling, but I don't know if it was like a conscious decision to kind of highlight the absurdity of it. Or uh-huh. if it's one of those things that the performers are so trained to do that I it's just so. second nature to them and they don't know how not to do that. It, it's always, that is a script for the show and you will do the script for the show. Right. <laughs> like having people there or not is immaterial. That's the script. Stick to the script. Yeah. You know. Because they're talking about canceled. also, they were talking about before they actually canceled, or not canceled, but postponed <laughs> Uh, the NBA season, they were talking about playing basketball games to an empty arena, to which I just kind of went, well, there goes any home field advantage or home court advantage. I, I mean, mean, well, yeah, because there's no one there to actually heckle or like, and this is the the other thing, like those people, sports people and, and wrestling and all these ones that are crowd participation, sports will benefit from a crowd. I... I don't know how I'd feel as a player being in a stadium empty playing football. Well, the They're only just... the only thing that would be cool and you think about it is if you got the chance let's say to go to an arena and play a pickup game the arena to yourself with the lights on but nobody there that'd be kind of interesting that'd be kind of cool, right? It would be very interesting. Right? Yeah. Now, to a professional yeah. player, it wouldn't be as interesting. But me as an audience member, so long as they mic, or like, you're going to be able to hear everything that's on the court. I never get to hear what's said on the court because obviously, unless you're sitting courtside, you wouldn't. And yeah. the things that are said courtside are not exactly necessarily family friendly. <laughs> they're, they're not broadcastable a lot of the time. And there's a reason why they don't mic the court. But um, <laughs> wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> Essentially, all you would hear is the screeching and shuffling of feet and the occasional, like, call to throw the ball to me and expletives. You know? Well, you'd hear all the trash talk, which would be a lot of fun to hear. It would. And if, yeah, they, they'd, have to have a, they'd have to have a dump button on it for sure. There was, there was um, and they experimented with this uh, on an alternate channel. Just It was during one season where rather than view the broadcast uh, feed, you could view the courtside feed, basically from one camera. And they did have audio from that camera. And it was wild. Listen, because you could hear. And it was just a different Mm. sounding game, a different looking game, because you were seeing it basically from one person's seated position, uh, which was the cameraman's. Uh, So again, that would be be different. There's some interesting things. Like this COVID-19 will make us rethink the way we do some things um, that we take for granted. And that's while, while the actual virus is definitely not good, the complementary benefits of that from a, a societal perspective are going to be interesting to unpack as the months unfold. So there's, that's about as deep as we get here on blockade. That, that is. Do. Yeah. Um, Okay, according to Roboloco, uh, Geno, who's the uh, current version of Akos, <laughs> since Akos got promoted uh, over at Zen, he's the one that does all the live streams, uh, says that the next two upcoming packs will be Williams. Okay. So that kind of goes in line with our guess of, if it's a universal, more universal tables, that it could be Flintstones and Shadow. Yeah, what... Oh yeah, Williams are both of those. I'm always shady with their film license ones because they're often bellies. 
Well, I think um, when he says Williams, it, that's just kind of a general term that they're. Oh, as in for like they will be Williams Williams pinball releases, not cr- fantasy. Correct. Not Zen, um, franchise releases. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, there you go. Hey. I don't know. There's speculation as best. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Speculation's good. All right. Like I said, um, will we be back next week? I don't know. If we're all locked in the house, then what better things do we have to do? <laughs> then, then speculate on pinball mm. from from our um, from our isolation chambers. Exactly. But uh, otherwise, we'll see you the week after that, right? Mm. And Most when we likely. see you, yeah. And and when we see you then, Jared, you know what we're going to talk about. It's definitely going to be some stuff and things. What more can you ask for? All right. See you all again later. Bye-bye. See ya.